I serve a risen Savior who's in the world today. And all that he is living, whatever men may say, I lay the hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just in time I need help, he's always near. He lives, he lives, how Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me and long lies there away. He lives, he lives, Christ is his telling part. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his love and care. Weary, I never will despair. I know that He is leading through all the storm and past, and day at His appearing will come my at last. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me, and long lies there away. He lives, He lives, salvation. Rejoice, rejoice, so Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujah, so Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek Him, the hope of all who find. No other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, the days that is today. He walks with me, and talks with me, and long lies there away. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Go ahead and play that verse. All right, Tom, play that verse with us. Cowboys and cowgirls, how y'all doing tonight? Good. How you folks out there on your in your living room watching on TV? How y'all doing tonight? <laughs> y'all may have a better crowd than we do. Our crowd's a little small tonight, but we're going to worship the Lord, amen? amen. And we're going to rejoice, and we're going to be glad in it. And we're not going to fear anything, but we're not going to be dumb and do the wrong things, right? All right. Well, let's invite the Lord to minister to us tonight. Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for your love, your mercy. Father, I thank you for everything that you do for us and have done for us, Father. You are such a great God. You are, we, we don't deserve you, Father, but, Lord, we're sure glad you love us. And, Lord, just uh, anoint our worship team tonight. Uh, anoint uh, Dennis as he brings the message. <clears throat> And, Lord, just uh, just give us a great night worshiping you and being ministered to by your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's do worship the Lord. He is worthy of all praise. Amen. Amen. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. Oh. 
close to you, Lord. He'll never let you go. Thank you, Lord. Just give it all to you. Tell him how much you love him. Or tell him how far you feel away from him. And ask him to just draw you in. Draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. you had that were not here and turn towards him now hallelujah nothing else can take his place Grace, 
the Lord has promised good to me. It's worth my home secure. As long as life endures, the earth shall soon dissolve like snow, and the sun will bear to shine. But God who called me. Will be forever mine. Will be forever. Will be forever mine. You are forever. And you are forever mine. And my chains are gone. I've been set free. chains are gone. Thank you, Lord, your amazing grace. Oh, hallelujah. I'm so glad that I'm part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain and danced by His blood. The family of God. Sherry, would you sing for us? part of the family of God. We're going to have the whole team play this song just so we can get that on the inside of us. We've been apart for so long. We're coming together. Join heirs with Jesus.
sing that one more time. glad you're here tonight on Facebook and here in the congregation. Hallelujah. We're so glad that Wayne's back with us this evening. Yes. He'll be here Sunday too. He got yes. a couple of days off and we appreciate that. But we're just as glad that Jesus is in the house. Oh, Amen. yes. Hallelujah. So why don't you welcome with me Brother Dennis Key. Yeah. We're, we're going to play this song later. Okay. Hallelujah. Ladies, if you're a lady, acknowledge yourself. All right. July 17th and 18th, Friday evening and Saturday is the ladies' retreat for Cowboys for Jesus. And we'd love to have you. If you're watching on Facebook, you need to register by this Sunday. So you can call the office and register. It's $35 a lady. That includes your meals and lodging. So uh, call the church office. If you're here at church, sign up on the uh, sign-up sheet that's in the... Uh, foyer, thank you. That room out there in the front where you come in. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Praise God. Hallelujah. Tonight, we want to try it again? All right, this it's a working. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to talk to you tonight on the promise of peace promise of peace. Second Timothy chapter 3 starts off this way. It says, but know this, that in the last days, how many believe we're in the last days? In the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. Does any of this sound familiar? Yes. Without self-control. Yeah. Brutal. Yeah. Despisers of good. Yeah. Traitors. Yeah. Headstrong, haughty. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. To me that sounds like today. People are scared. People are doing all sorts of things that they know is wrong. People have no peace. People are scared to leave their homes. If it's not COVID-19, it's some riots. If it's not riots, it's some other thing going on. People without work, financial problems, put stress in the home, then you have marital conflict, you have interpersonal relationships, friends, people fighting against people that would never think of it in normal times. It's the end time. And there seems to be no peace in the world. John 14, 27, Jesus says, Peace, I leave with you. My peace. Do you think Jesus was ever worried about everything? Huh? Do you think Jesus walked around in fear? Do you think Jesus cowered away from uh, circumstance and situations? No. Why? He knew he was what? Right with God. The vertical part of the cross and right with his fellow man. The horizontal part of the cross. Jesus was at peace. And he says... Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. 
It's a gift from God. It's a promise from God. It's a gift by God. Everything we receive is God's grace that we receive by faith in Christ Jesus. So if you're lacking peace tonight, I want you to know that God has promised you peace. His peace. It goes on, it says, Peace not as the world give do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So we have a promise of peace, and we want to obtain that peace. We do it by faith in Jesus Christ, because it is a gift from Him to us. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 26. I just want to run through some verses with you in the Bible. Ezekiel 37, verses 26 and 27. Moreover, I will make a covenant. Now, a covenant is an agreement, but it's stronger than an agreement. We've referred to the Old Testament or the Old Covenant, and the New Testament or the New Covenant that we have in Christ Jesus. So under the Old Covenant with Israel, God made with them a covenant of peace. He said, if you read that entire chapter, it's when he says, when you, I'm going to bring my people back to the land of Israel from wherever they be. I want you to know right now that Israel is having more people come into its land and becoming Israelites from all over the world. Fulfilling this scripture, it was fulfilled in those days of David, but it's also being fulfilled in our day. He said, moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, his people, and it shall be an everlasting covenant. Say everlasting. everlasting. That means it isn't going to go away. And I will establish them and multiply them, and I will set my sanctuary in midst of them forever. Now I want you to hold on to that. In the Old Testament, he said, I'm going to set my sanctuary with them forever. Talking about Israel, the sanctuary there in, in Jerusalem. Verse 27. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Indeed, I will be their God, and they will be my people. I don't know about you, but I'm a person of the people of God. I said, I'm a part of the family of God. Come on. Is he your God? Are you his people? Well, it says that in the Old Testament, under the old covenant, the covenant he made with Israel under the law, that he would never leave them, he wouldn't forsake them, he would be with them, he would give them peace, and that he would be with them, the sanctuary would be right there with his people. Now, move us over to the new covenant. You see, the promises of the new covenant are better than the old. So he's not only going to be with us, but the Bible says he will be in us. And we have peace. What did it say in John? Peace I give to you. My peace I give to you. We have a covenant of peace with God that is everlasting. And he is not only guaranteeing it by being with us, but he is in us. The Bible says that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. I was bought with the price. What? The price of the blood of Jesus. Isaiah 54. Staying in the Old Testament, but I want you to see it. Because those things that are in the te Old Testament explain to us or better clarify the things in the New Testament. And, it, and without the knowledge of the Old Testament, a lot of the New Testament doesn't make full sense. Isaiah 54, verse 9 and 10. This is like the waters of Noah to me. How many remember the flood of uh, uh, the Noah? It covered the earth and destroyed all the people. Except eight. Noah and his family in the ark. And God, when they landed on dry land, after the destruction of all that, God put a rainbow in the sky. God put a rainbow in the sky. Aren't you glad I don't lead worship, huh? 
Hallelujah. He put a rainbow in the sky. What? Because it was a promise. It was a covenant that he made. I will never again flood the earth. And he says, just like that type of covenant, this is like the waters of Noah to me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth. How many are worried about a flood that will cover the earth? We don't. Why? Because we have what? A promise of God. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth, so I have sworn that I would not be what? Angry. That I wouldn't be what? Angry. Did you know God's not mad at you? Well, that comes as news to some people. God is not angry with you. He's not mad at you. He is for you. For God so loved the world that He sent His only Son to die on the cross for you so that you could have new life in Him. Life everlasting. By what? Just putting your faith in the work of Jesus Christ. Not in your own works. So I have sworn... The promise, just like that we don't worry about the flood covering the whole earth, we don't have to worry that God's mad at me. That's grace, folks. That's peace. If I have peace to God, to heck with the rest of them. Come on. Now, I'm being, I don't mean that ugly. But if I've got it right with God, it's okay. And he says, so I've sworn that I would not be angry with you, nor rebuke you. Verse 10. For the mountains shall depart. I mean when everything's falling apart. When, when the good things of life, when the mountains just fall apart. For the mountains shall depart, the hills be removed. In other words, life is in total turmoil. Come on now. What did we just read about? In these days... People will be angry for no reason. People will rise up with disrespect, not honoring people, not honoring property, not obeying their prayers, not doing the things that are right. When all of this goes on, when my kindness, but my kindness, but my kindness shall not depart from you. Do you know that shall is one of the strongest words in the English language? Shall and will. Two of the strongest words in the English language. And he says, My kindness will not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of what? Peace. My covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has mercy on you. That was a promise. When everything's falling apart, I'm going to keep peace with you. You, did you know you can be in the midst of a storm and have peace? And it drives people crazy. Everything is falling apart and you're just cool as a cucumber. You're just hanging in there. Why? Because you know that you and God have the solution. You know what the solution is? It's Jesus. I said it's Jesus Jesus is our peace. Jesus is our peace. In today's world of turmoil, look for peace. Take it by faith. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14 say this. But now in Christ Jesus. How many of you are in Christ Jesus? See, the scripture says if you're a new person in Christ Jesus. In other words, if you've been born again, if you accepted him into your life as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says you become a new person in Christ Jesus. That old things have passed away. All that old fear, all that old character, all that old strife, all that old anger has passed away and things have become new. What's new? Peace. The peace of God comes upon me when I'm born again. It says, 
But now, in Christ Jesus, you were once far off, having been brought near by the blood of Jesus. See, it's through, only through the blood. He says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ and his shed blood on Calvary. Verse 14, Ephesians 2, 14. For he himself, speaking of that Jesus Christ that bought our freedom, for he himself is our peace. He is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of, of separation. Pastor Jimmy uh, taught it so well that in the, in the temple, how you had all the different courts, you had the court of the Gentile and it's separated by a wall from the women's court of the Jews. And so they were separated. The Jews, they looked down on all Gentiles. You, you read the story of the Samaritan woman. He told that story so well. But what? Jesus, a Jew, shouldn't even be talking to her. Why? Because there was a wall of separation. Another time where Jesus, a, a, a Syrophoenician woman comes and says, oh, please heal my daughter. He says, what am I supposed to do? Talk with dogs? What was he doing? He was calling her because she wasn't of the Jews. There was that separation. And she said, well, call me a dog, but even dogs eat scraps from the table. And he said, boy, that's faith. And so he heals her daughter. Why? Because she is willing to take anything from the Lord. Because why? He's not angry with us. He's full of kindness and peace. And he brought peace to her home. So what it's saying is Jesus himself is our peace. Jesus is the peace that we are looking for. Jesus is the peace that we need. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 24. But Jesus, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. You see, Abel's blood cried out from the ground. If you know the story, Cain killed his brother Abel because Abel's offering was accepted by God, and Cain's wasn't because he wasn't doing it according to what God demanded. He was doing it by his works and not by faith in God. So his... Offering was rejected, and because of it, he got angry at God, but what? He took it out on his brother, his fellow man. I think a lot of what's going on today is people are angry at God for the situation or whatever the things are in, and they're taking it out on their fellow man. But getting back to it, Abel's blood cried out and said, Vengeance! Vengeance! You see, vengeance is not ours. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. But what does this verse say? It says that Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaks better than the blood of Abel. Because the blood of Jesus is not crying out for vengeance. The blood of Jesus takes away all of our guilt, all of our sorrow, all of our pain. He gives us His grace, His mercy, His love is poured out by the sprinkling of the blood that takes away our sin, takes away our anger, takes away our grief, takes away our pain, takes away our suffering, takes away our sickness. That's peace. That's peace. All because of Jesus Christ. And he's the mediator. In other words, he's standing there saying, Satan, I've already bought it. I've already paid for that. They don't have anger. They don't have resentment. They don't have fear. They have me. And he goes to God and he says, God, that's okay. God, I've already covered that. See, a mediator handles both parties. And brings them what? Into reconciliation. Into peace. Brings them into peace. Isaiah 26. <clears throat> verses 3 and 4. You will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For in Yah, 
the Lord is everlasting strength. You will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. See, the way peace comes from the Lord is when you put your trust in him. You don't put your trust in the situation. You don't put your trust in mankind. You don't put your trust in something. But you put your trust in the Lord, and when you do, peace comes into your situation. Peter says it this way. Cast all your care, cast all your worry on the Lord. In other words, put your trust in Him because He cares for you. Remember we started out, it was, it, it, he, He's not angry with us. He's not out to get you. He's a good God. Thank you for your amen. God is good. John 10.10, 10, the drawing line. If it's stealing, killing, and destroying, it's from the devil. It's from the thief that comes to take away your peace, that comes to take away your joy, that comes to take away your life. He wants to destroy you. You see, it's interesting. Do you know a thief doesn't steal something you don't have? That's East Texas rocket science. A thief will not come to steal something you don't have. Come on, I mean, think like I think. That's scary. <laughs> but no, seriously, a thief is not going to try to steal something you don't have. He'll go to where it is and try to steal it from that. Well, if the devil's coming to rob us of our peace, come on now, stay with me here. It's because what? We have peace. You have the promise of peace from Jesus Christ. If you have Jesus, you have peace. Jesus has made unto us peace. My peace I give to you. Come on, folks. We have peace. So the devil comes to what? Take what we don't have. If you look at his circumstances, if you look at what he's throwing in your face, if you look at all the turmoil, the mountains departing, the hills being removed in your life, if you look at that, he's got you. He's stolen your peace. Why? Because you've taken your eyes off of Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Hebrews 12, 2 says, keeping your eyes or looking unto Jesus, the author, the one that creates it, and the perfecter or the finisher, the one that brings it into full fruition. And that's our faith. And we have to have faith to receive the peace that is ours. For it's by grace that you are saved through faith. Not of yourselves. Where did your faith come from? From Jesus. From His Word. The living Word. You have the peace. All you have to do is receive it by faith. Bring it in and receive it by faith. Philippians 4 and verse 6. Oh, uh, yeah, let's go ahead. Be anxious for nothing. What's anxious? Worry. Christians call it concern. Come on. That, come on. Well, I, I don't really worry. I'm just concerned about this. No. You're in fear. If you're worried about it, if you're concerned about it, you're anxious about it, and that's not God, because God is what? Peace. Peace. God is in control. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. Next verse. And the what? Peace. The peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. See, Jesus is our peace and so what do we do? Instead of worrying about... How many have ever worried about something and it never happened? 
Did you know most people, what you worry about, I'm talking to you out there in television land on Facebook, there's people out there that are worried, that are taking worry and putting all their concentration, all their thought, all their energy on something that will probably never happen. They're worried because what? They've taken their eyes off of Jesus. They've taken their eyes off of the Word of God. And they've let the devil come in and stir up the mountains and move the hills and bring in all these circumstances. And they fix their eyes on the circumstances instead of on Jesus. Because Jesus is our peace. My peace I give to you, Jesus said. Not as the world gives but the way I give it to you. And then you receive it by faith. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So what do you do? You take those worries, you take all those concerns, and you say, Jesus, I'm bringing these to you. Come on. You go by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. And I want to thank you, Lord, that you're on my side. You're not angry with me. You're not upset with me. I have your peace because I have Jesus. Greater is the one that lives in me than he that lives in the world. You take it to him. And Jesus says, okay, you gave me something, now I'm going to give you something. Come on. You give him your worries, he gives you his peace. You give him your sin, he gives you his forgiveness. You give him your sickness, he gives you his health. You give him your worries and depression, and he gives you a mind of Christ and the wisdom of God. Do you see that? He's a good God. He loves you, he cares for you, and he has peace for you in every aspect of your life. Proverbs 3, it says, Trust in the Lord, verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your understanding. Come on. Where does he give the peace? In our heart and in our mind. See, when you put your trust in the Lord and lean not to what you're thinking, come on. Do you know his thoughts are higher than your thoughts? Isaiah says that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, that his ways are better than our ways. So what do we need to do? I need to agree with God. I need to agree with God. Colossians 3 and verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. What? What did it say? Let the peace of God do what? Rule. Rule. If you look that word up, it means to act as an umpire. To act as an umpire. What does an umpire do? He enforces the rules of the game. Come on. What's the rules of the game? That Jesus has given us his peace. That Jesus has made peace unto us. So you let the peace of God act as a controlling agent enforcing that rule in your life. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you were called in one body and be thankful. You see, you're called to a life of peace. You're called to a life of prosperity. You're called to a life of blessing. Jesus says, I came to give you abundant life. Fear, worry is not abundant life. Peace is abundant life. So you let God's peace rule in your life. Let me read it to you out of the Amplified Classic Version. It says this, let the peace, the soul harmony. There you go, worship leaders. Isn't it beautiful? Did you, have you ever sung a song and everybody just sings exactly the same? And then you sing a song and they break it into the harmonious parts. You got the bass and you got the tenor. And you got the alto and you got the soprano and you got all these parts. Which is prettier? Huh? It's when each part, come on, does their piece, operates together. You see, if we will let that soul harmony, which by 
comes by Christ Jesus' rule in our hearts. When you let Him bring that peace to you, when you receive it by faith, in the midst of that situation, it's like harmonious music. It's like a symphony all playing together. That's what just comes over you. And let the peace, that soul harmony, which comes by Christ Jesus, rule or act as an umpire continually in your heart. Deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your mind. See, that's that own understanding that Proverbs was talking about. Settling with finality all questions that arise in your mind. That's the worries and the concerns in that peaceful state to which you as members of Christ's body were called to live and be thankful, appreciative, giving praise to God. So you don't only receive it by faith, but you with thanksgiving praise God. Thank you, Lord. I've got peace. I've got peace like a river. Peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I'm telling you, folks, it's that easy. It's when you're in a situation where fear and torment where stress and anxiety come and want to flood into your life. You need to remember Jesus and take your eyes off of the things of this world and focus your eyes on the author and finisher of our faith and say, I thank you, Jesus. You've been made peace unto me. And I receive your peace. I take it by faith. I don't feel like peace. Come on now. Well, see, faith... It's the substance of things you hope for. It's the proof of the things that you can't see. So what does that mean? That means all this turmoil is going on. All these things are pounding on me. I don't feel peaceful. I feel upset. I feel angry. I feel out of shape. Come on. I feel like I'm falling apart. But what do you do? You don't go by your feelings. You walk by faith. The just shall live by faith. And you say, I thank you. Jesus, you've been made peace unto me. I praise you. I mean, say it out loud. I have the peace of God. And you receive that peace by faith. And you let it rule in your life. Is this worry of peace or is it fear? No, that's fear. Okay, then I'm not going to have that. See, Corinthians tells us that you bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ and His Word. What does that mean? That means when those thoughts come, you can't stop them from coming, but you don't have to take them. They can come and you say, No, devil, I'm not going to be worried. I'm not going to be concerned. I have peace. I have the peace of God. I might not feel like it. I might not look like it. But by faith, I have the peace of God. And it says that peace will come in and it'll change your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And it will be there and you thank Him for it. Amen? Amen. Ephesians 2.14. I just want to repeat this and I want you to see it. For He Himself, speaking of Jesus Christ, is our peace. Say, Jesus, Jesus is, is my, my peace. peace. Jesus is my peace. Jesus is your peace. And you have to declare it by faith. You receive it by faith. You declare it with your mouth. What you receive in your heart, you speak with your mouth. That's how you got saved. You didn't feel like you were saved. Come on. You came in there a sinner and you went out a saint. What was the difference? I believed with my heart. I confessed with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and has forgiven me of my sins. And what happened? Man, you went from darkness to light. Huh? You went from sin to salvation. 
Well, the same thing happens. You can go from worry and fear and concern and anxiety and stress and all of that, and you can step right over into peace. How? By believing in your heart that Jesus, what, is my peace, and confess it with your mouth, Jesus is my peace. I take that fear, I bring it captive to what? To Jesus Christ and his word. I stand on the word of God. Why? Because he's broken it all apart in Christ Jesus. He is our peace. Matthew 5 and verse 9. Blessed. Everybody say blessed. Blessed. That means highly favored. Come on. Happy. In right standing. Blessed are the what? Are the what? For they shall be called the sons of God. Did you know when you see strife, be a peacemaker. Don't join into strife. Be a peacemaker. We're called to what? The, you know, Corinthians says it this way, that we are ambassadors for Christ. We are to bring what? The ministry of reconciliation. Huh? We're to mediate so that things come out balanced. What? What? with peace with God. So our job is to tell other people about the peace that we have in Christ Jesus. We are to be peacemakers. When you see somebody upset in the store, when you see somebody all stressed out, can I pray with you? I know the peacemaker. I can show you how to have peace in this situation. Because why? Why? Jesus has been made peace unto us. And He can be made peace unto you. Come on, folks. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. He's a good God. He gives us peace. In the midst of the storm, we can walk in calm, cool, collected peace of God. But don't hold it for yourself. Don't let everybody else run around in turmoil and you're sitting there. Come on. Share it. Let them know. You want to know why I have peace? Because I have Jesus. Share what you have. Be a peacemaker. Let me close with this. Isaiah 54 and verse 10. For the mountains shall depart, the hills be removed, but my kindness, says the Lord, will not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed. Don't let the devil steal your peace. For Jesus said that my covenant of peace will not be removed. It's there. All you got to do is receive it and walk in it. Amen? It's a promise of God. We have the promise of peace. Last thing I'd like to do, I'd like you to just hold out your hands. I want to read a benediction blessing to you. There on Facebook, I don't care who you're with or what you are, if you need peace, receive it from Jesus Christ. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can have the peace of God. Hebrews 13, 20. Now may the God of peace, who brought our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, resurrected, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work as a peacemaker to do his will, working in you that that is pleasing in his sight, living in peace through Christ Jesus our Lord. Be glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, I hope you received something tonight. I hope that you got the peace of God. And I hope that it will shine in your light as you become a peacemaker in whatever situation you're in. Praise team, come and lead us out of here as we worship the Lord together. Share the peace. That's right.
everyone in the world is needing peace. We got our Jesus. Share your Jesus with them. Amen. And this message, this song is called Send the Light. So uh, there's souls to be rescued and souls to be saved. So hallelujah. There's a call that comes from over the restless way. Send the line, Lord, send the line. If there are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the line, Lord, send the line. And send the line, the blessed gospel of light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Team. Well, yeah. do you have peace? Did you receive the peace tonight? Amen. Thank you, Brother Dennis. That was great. I needed a little peace. <laughs> anyway, how many of y'all still glad you came to church? Amen. Well, we sure delighted that we had some folks join us on, on, the, on the tube at home. And we hope you'll be back Sunday. We'll be looking for you. And uh, we had, the crowd got, I said it was a small crowd when we started, but we had some more folks come in, so we got a few. So anyway, let's ask God to keep the peace flowing. Amen? Amen. Well, Father, I just thank you for this message. I thank you for your love. I thank you for Jesus, Father. I thank you for all that, that you've done for us through him, Father. Lord, I thank you for the people you've brought to Cowboys for Jesus, Father. You've brought pastors that, that really can preach and you brought worship team father and lord you're just blessing us going and coming and i thank you for your peace i receive your peace and lord we just want you to keep guiding us and directing us and and uh, lord just show us how to how to minister to folks even in the midst of the storm 
So just get us all back here safe and sound Sunday and let us have the rest of a great week, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh